So I will go to my dashboard items and click on scorecard. And when you build your scorecard, you can build a scorecard using a template with analysis services, with a or just a standard blank scorecard, or a, a tabular scorecard where it's going to pull in list of items. Well, I have found that the easiest way is to just start with a standard blank scorecard and then just drag in the items that you want. Okay? So when you're doing KPIs, I find that is the easiest. So I'm going to go with standard and I'm going to choose my blank scorecard and click OK. So on the now I'm, I'm able to build my scorecard, but on the working area, on the right-hand side, it'll give me access to all my KPIs in my performance point content. Okay? And then if I connect to a data source, then it will give me dimensions and other, you know, if I've got other aggregations that I've developed on measures, I'll have those available to me. But what you're going to notice is I don't need to connect to a data source if I start dropping some KPIs onto my scorecard. As soon as I drop a KPI onto my scorecard, it will automatically connect me to the data source that's driving that KPI. So if I take my risk KPI and drop this onto my scorecard, automatically connects me to my data source that's driving that KPI. So now I see the Microsoft Project SharePoint KPI and I, I or sorry, the Microsoft Project SharePoint data source and when I open up my dimensions it gives me the dimensions that are available in that data source. So now I can take my project list and drop the project list over here into the row items. Now if I want all children to be visible, I can select my children. I don't want the timesheet. I can remove those. And I get a list of projects and then I get my risk KPI. Now I remember teaching myself how to use performance point and one of the most frustrating things was I thought it wasn't working because it gave me a blank KPI. On the edit ribbon, there's an update button which will update the data that's in your report. So it wasn't until I dropped the projects in place that it said, okay, now we've got some, some key performance indicators we can calculate. So you've got to go to your update button on the edit ribbon to get it to show the data related to that KPI. So the KPI is showing me a, a target of zero and it shows me that we're 200% over that with a risk count of two and we're 300% with a risk count of three. Now, I don't really need to see the risk count. So I'm going to right click and delete that piece and just show the target column. And I, what I might want to do is modify the attributes of this metric. So on my edit ribbon, I can click on metric and modify the attributes. So maybe instead of target, I want to call this my, um, you know, it says risk KPI. And I'm going to call this my, um, you know, rating. And then on the left and right of that graphical indicator, I can choose what it is I would like to see. So currently, the data value is on the left. Maybe I would like the actual value, so that the target value of zero is on the left. But if I change that to an actual value and click OK, it'll show me the count on the left-hand side. 
And if I go back to that and open up my metric settings again, on the right hand side, at the moment I'm seeing the variance. But I could change that to show a score. And so this is showing me if my target is zero, this is showing me the, the score. So I've got 67%. That really, because it doesn't, I'm doing, I'm banding it to a set value. These scores are not making a lot of sense. So let's go to my settings. A score, let me tell you when a score would be appropriate. Let's say I've got 30 projects here and I want to normalize the data and I want to score my projects as to which one is the best and which one's the worst. That's when a score makes sense. So I, I'm just taking the sum of all my risks and I'm saying, okay, how do these all rank? But I've got a set threshold. So uh, let's see, we've, we could just have no value. So, you know, have the actual value show up on the left and no value on the right makes sense. What we'll do is we'll have a, a score, a KPI details report linked to this so when someone clicks on the cell they can see the details on what defines the green, yellow, and red. Let's drop in another KPI. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my list of KPIs and we'll drop that budget KPI that we just created. Alright, so we'll take that and we'll drop that to the right of risk and then we'll do an update to get an update on what our ranking is. So this is giving us our budget KPR rating and I can see we're probably dividing by zero in some instances which is why we're getting an error because this is a formula. So uh, let's make some changes here. First of all, I want to change the metric so that I'm showing on the on the left hand side let's see maybe a variance that looks better, show the variance and then We've got all of these nulls where it's, in some cases, it's showing an error because it's dividing by zero. So maybe what we want to do is add a filter that removes anything where uh, baseline is equal to zero. So we remove those from the report altogether. Now filters are something a little bit different. We, when we add a filter to a scorecard, the filter has to be applied to the dashboard. And I've got a really nice diagram that demonstrates that. So I brought up a PowerPoint slide that shows you the, the components of what goes into a dashboard. So I've taught you how to set up your connections to your different data sources. We've done a few of these. And then through those connections, we can start to build content. And I've showed you how to build a KPI. And now we're in the middle of building a scorecard, which holds the KPI. Now, if we drop that into a dashboard, and we don't want to see certain items, maybe items where there is no baseline, so there's no baseline data, so how can we get a how can we get a proper scoring on felt on on whether or not that's that's got a budget variance so we could define a filter and apply the filter to the dashboard and when you apply the filter to the dashboard it applies it to all the content that's on that dashboard okay so i just you know thought of that as i'm looking at the results of our last example where we've got some, some null values, obviously, in our baseline. Well, let's finish the scorecard.
and then we'll save it and then we'll build a filter and we'll build our dashboard. So let's add another item. Uh, let's see, we could do our, our issue KPI. The issue KPI is a similar KPI to the one we built which is our risk. So let's just drop that here to the left of our risk KPI. Let's do an update. Okay, so it's already got some, some uh, settings on the metric itself to show the actual value and no value on the right. So that's perfect. And then we've got, uh, let's see, we, our risk factor was the one that gave us our threshold. So maybe I'll put that one just between budget and risk. Now, I can see here, because we know we've got you know, some that are slightly off target, and uh, we know we had a number of them that had zero, so that's why we've got a lot of, of blanks. Okay, so as far as the metric, let's take a look at the rating. Um, you know, if we want to call this our uh, threshold, just to be different, and we want the data value to be displayed. All right, so I'm satisfied with the scorecard that I've built so far, so I'm going to go ahead and, and rename that with a proper name. I could have done it in the Properties tab, but you can also right-click in the left-hand panel and do a rename, and I'm going to call that my EPM scorecard. And I'll go ahead and save. 